Good to see y'all. We are here to worship the Lord together. Hope you found your bulletin. If you haven't, uh, get one during the music. Also, welcome to those of you who are online. Welcome you all that we will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Did you know the COVID numbers are going up? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> We're feeling it all around. Thank you for being here. We do have masks available. If any of you would like them, there's some of the pulpit, some in the welcome center, some in the foyer. Also, we have hand sanitizer all around our building. We would love to encourage you to uh, wash your hands, whether you need it or not. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now, just to do it. And I just encourage you. Don't breathe on each other. Don't kiss anybody you're not married to. And we'll be okay. And let's pray. Seriously, I'm not being sarcastic. Let's pray for those that have decisions to make. Our medical leaders, our community leaders, our government leaders. It was really great. I was looking at one of those graphs, you know, you see, and it went down, it was down and down, and it's gone back up. So let's do what we can to bring it down again. There's a lot of good things God's wanting to do in our world. And we've got to take care of this. Um, there are some people from our community that are, that are sick with COVID. And there's even a few that I know have died. And let's, let's just be in prayer for this, that we will overcome once again. I want to invite our, our musicians now to lead us in singing our praises to God. Come on, let's stand again as we sing a new hallelujah. Can you hear there's a new song breaking out from the children of freedom? Every race and every nation sing it out, sing a new
everlasting God. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, He reigns forever. Our hope, a strong different than God. Or to ask it in a more uh, comparative way, what is the way God is greater than us? So much greater than us. Many, many things probably come to mind, but we just sang about one of them just now. Strength. Only God never gets tired. You and I get tired. It's interesting that in the creation story, when God made the world and everything, he rested at the end. But in the Ten Commandments, when the Sabbath was given to us, we are to rest before we work. Because we get tired. God rested simply to enjoy what he made. Not that he was tired. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We're here to worship the Lord. And we wait. 
We pause, we stop, we cease. So God will bring some of his strength to us. God gives us strength to love people like we can't love them on our own. God gives us strength to make up our mind when that's a struggle for us sometimes. God gives us strength to do what is right when the others around you don't seem to get it at all. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. The strength of the Lord comes to us who are weak. That's why we're here today to worship the Lord. This Wednesday night, we'll, we'll restart our Wednesday night row ministry with social distancing in place, with all safe protocols going on. Tony said the menu is smothered pork chops. To go plates are available. To go plates are available. He's, I'd like you to hang out with me. Uh, I like people just hanging around here at the church. I'm sorry. I just really think that's a good thing to do, y'all. Um, smothered pork chops, one of the most popular menus there. He's starting off with that. Good. Love that one. Uh, so, but do read the bulletin. A lot of good things going on. There'll be children's activities, adult activities. Uh, young adults, uh, Bible study on parenting. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Bible study on overcoming fear. If you'd be interested, see me. I need to get you a copy of the book we'll be using by Max Locato. Uh, but overcoming fear. There's a lot of fear going around in our world today. And I felt the need we need to speak to that. Also, uh, I want to celebrate. I forgot to get this in the bullet last Sunday, so I really want to make a big deal of it today. Uh, I did have the privilege to meet him. Connor Migas was born to Carrie and Michael Migas, July 26th. Beautiful little baby boy. I was able to go over and visit them in their home, and they let me hold their baby and uh, pray for their baby and we just celebrate with the Migas family the birth of, of Connor. Let's now go to the Lord in prayer. Desiree, would you hand me that stuff there sitting beside your rear? As we go to prayer today, we want to pray for uh, a good friend of ours, Harold Butts. Uh, is not in the hospital. He's been in the hospital. We prayed for him on previous Sundays. But today, uh, I can tell you, he is at Crown Rehab on Dolphin Street. Uh, if you'd like to go visit him, I can tell you how. I had a nice visit with him yesterday afternoon. You have to stand outside the window and talk on a cell phone. But we, we had a good visit, and uh, Harold's doing well. He's making progress. Uh, this is always a good sign when I see this with people. I don't bring it up sometimes because I don't always see it. Harold was disappointed they don't do therapy on the weekends. <laughs> He's got a good attitude. Let's pray for our brother Harold. Also, our brother Danny Stringer has COVID, and it seems, even though he's not in the hospital, he seems very, very sick. I was texting with Luanna. She, um, some of you may not know Luanna. Luanna is a traveling nurse, and she had to fly back uh, from her work assignment yesterday to take care of Danny. And so this is serious, and let's uh, be praying for um, Danny Stringer. Also, we want to continue to pray for the COVID crisis that has re reasserted itself here in our part of the world, but the whole world's over. And there may be further ones. And also, the, some of, many of us have been watching on the news and seeing what's playing out in Afghanistan. And we want to pray for those people in that situation as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time to bring our lives more back into focus with you. Lord, give us the grace that you will help us be able to live in the fullness of your love that you will indwell us with your Holy Spirit, that your grace will be multiplied to us in this time together. As we just sang, Lord, we come here to wait upon you, to commune with you here on the Lord's Supper Day. And we ask that you will indwell us with strength. Strength will rise up in us. Strength to love those in our life that are hard to love strength to do what we need to do, strength to not give up and, get, and not be sucked into the feelings of hopelessness and fearfulness, but instead boldly hear from you to live for you. Lord, we pray for our medical and our community leaders as 
Many discussions and plans are being made about the COVID resurgence. Lord, help those that will be able to uh, have decisions to make. They'll make wise decisions. That we won't be afraid, neither will we be careless. Lord, help us to plot out plans so we can see those numbers go back down again very soon. Lord, there's a lot of things you're calling your church to do, and we have to do it safely. You're calling us to be safe as well. So help us to know how to balance those two realities we're facing right now as your church. We pray for the situation in Afghanistan. We pray for the leaders there in Afghanistan and the leaders in the United States. Uh, we ask that um, the wise and best choices will be made here as the situation seems to be falling apart before our eyes. Give our leaders great wisdom and help them to use their best wisdom and listen, think about what is best long-term and not expediency. And Lord, we do pray for our good friend Harold Butts and just ask that you bless him, you strengthen him, and just give him grace in this time of rehab, as well as we pray for Danny Strieber. We, we love Danny, and we just ask that you bless him and help him to recover from the COVID quickly. Be with him and Luana now as they're seeking to find a way to recover and overcome this time of sickness. Lord, give us a grace in our time together that this day will be truly a day of worship, a day that our worship will reach you and you will reach us, that you will be able to get through to us in this experience and work your transformation in us. We pray for Jennifer Barnes and Lydia Sane on the traveling uh, learning experience they're doing about starting a new ministry in our church. And we just ask that you bless them and help them be able to see for a plan that they can follow and be used by you in, your, in your church's work. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I did fail to mention, uh, I do want to pray for, I prayed for Olivia Sane, Jennifer Barnes. They are visiting a church in Mississippi today uh, to learn more about a ministry called Johnny's Friends uh, with the uh, goal of creating in our church a ministry for people with special needs. And we're going, another church has it and learning about it. So I'm, that's exciting, but at the same time, something we pray for. In your bulletin, there is a reservation slip. If you plan to eat row with us, find that, fill it out, and just drop it in there. If I haven't given you time to get it done in the next minute here, uh, I want to invite you, if you would do that, uh, do that any time during the service, you can bring it up at the end of the service. Let me see. Musicians, am I getting out of order here? Yes. I am. I thought I was. Oh, that didn't feel right, but it was, never mind. Hey, guys, uh, let's have our young folks. Do we got any other young folks here? No? It's only you two. Okay. Good morning. I'm glad to see you. We are here to worship the Lord because we do want to key in on a key word for our today time today, and that word is focus. Sometimes you may hear that at school. Your teacher will call you or the whole class. You need to focus on what we're doing. You need to concentrate. You need to do that. Why does focus matter? I want to show you why it matters, okay? That's why it matters. Some of you weren't watching, and you didn't see that one coming. You guys did, and you're good. Yeah, I'll clean up the debris in a minute here. Oh, I forgot to move the kit. Thank you. Uh, why does focus matter? You know, I have in this little popper thing here in my pocket everything I need to make the pop happen, right? Did, did you see me add anything to it when I took it out of my pocket? It was already there, right? All I did was pull the string, right? All right, that's, uh, that's the power of focus. See, you got to bring everything together. See, it's all here, but it, it's not popping, is it? It has to come together in the right place, at the right time, to do the right thing. And that's why we have this thing called a church. That's why we have this experience here we call a worship service. It is the time we bring it all together. 
out there, uh, and the, really, I hate to tell you this, the older you get, the more you have on your mind. I don't know if you feel like you got a lot on your mind. Right, people over age? Yeah, 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 the older you get, and, and, and it weighs you down, and you think about this, and you think about that, and you gotta do this, you gotta call those people, and you gotta make sure you, you pay that bill. It's a funny thing, uh, I paid a bill last month, uh, I'm old fashioned, I still write checks and put them in envelopes. And uh, when I found it two weeks later, it didn't do any good because I forgot to mail it. See, focus, things, so many things to think about. And so uh, we want to be here. This is where you bring it all together. Jesus calls us to love him. Jesus calls us to love each other. Jesus calls us to study the Bible and let the Bible speak to us. And we come here to bring all those in focus. So we're here to focus so we can, God can do what God needs to do. And uh, do you want me to pop one more just for the fun of it? Yeah, all right. Let's have a quick word of prayer. <coughs> Dear Lord, I thank you for these young folks that are here. And I just ask that you bless them and just give them a good time of learning with Desiree at this hour and just Bless them that they will be able to bring their focus to you and you will focus your love on them and you will help them in their lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And, and I'll clean up my mess. You won't see it, but I promise I will clean up my mess. Okay? All right, y'all head on out on this resurrect. Gary, could you? Yeah. Let's commit these gifts to God. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of serving you and being called your sons and your daughters. We thank you for what goes on in the service to help us receive the focus we need to live for you. Lord, bless these gifts, multiply them for your kingdom's work. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Victory has a name, and it's Jesus. The Word has a name, and it's Jesus. Redemption has a name, and it's Jesus. Holiness has a name. scriptures or your device as we look at this passage together and have your bulletin handy have a pen there a holder in the pew in front of you as we listen to God and pray that God will speak to you today he will minister to each one of us here today Matthew chapter 16 beginning with verse 13 Jesus is talking with his disciples on the far side of the Lake of Galilee. This is the first time anywhere in the Bible the word church is ever used. Beginning with verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, 
Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or perhaps one of the prophets. But what about you, Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are now Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. I'm glad that you take being a part of our church seriously. Those of you who are joined here in person, those of you who are joining us online. I want to ask a question to begin our message. What drives this church or any church? A number of things, and those of you, uh, some of you have been part of our church your whole life. Others of you have been a part of a number of different churches, and as I work my way quickly through this list, I think you're gonna click with experiences you've had in our church or, or with other churches. What drives this church? Many churches are driven by tradition. What we've always done. How it has always been done. In those churches when decisions are being made, this question always comes up. Have we done this before? And then sometimes the objection is raised. We have never done this this way before. Tradition. And each of these, I got to tell you, have some strengths. But they also have some huge weaknesses. Second one is personality. Usually it's the personality of the pastor. Sometimes it's a key personality in a church. Uh, the famous leadership speaker, John Maxwell, Talks about the first church he ever served, that he figured out who was the strongest personality in the church, and he convinced this man to do whatever he wanted, and whatever, he, when he raised his hand, everybody else raised his hand. Personality. Strong person in the church. Third, finances. The question is asked, can we afford it? Now, finances are important. Money is a great equalizer in a lot of life. Money helps us make decisions that otherwise would be hard to make. But finances is not the call of the church, but we're called, stay with me on this, to be financially wise as a church. Finances is something we all share, have in common here. We all use money. It is all part of our life. And it is a key part of the Christian life that we have to let Jesus be the Lord of our finances. And Jesus, it's very hard to let Jesus be the Lord of all of your life without letting Jesus be the Lord of your finances because your money affects so many decisions you make. Now, on the flip side of that, as a church, we are also called by God to be wise with our finances. A uh, number of things I like about the Methodist church structure, one of them is that every local church and Methodist church has to have a finance committee. There's four committees you've got to have, and finance is one of them. And we had a meeting this week of our finance committee where we asked serious questions. Prayerfully, we didn't make decisions, we just asked questions this week. Where do we need to cut the budget if the giving continues at the same trajectory? Prayerfully, thoughtfully, what can we reduce? Because we're called to be careful with the finances as a church. Third, uh, fourth one, programs is what the church is doing. And some churches do kind of take it as their mission just to keep people busy. Uh, I was on staff at a, another church, a much larger church that had a lot more things going on. I remember we were in a staff meeting, and a friend of mine, uh, one of the other staff members who had come from another church, we had one day on the calendar with nothing on it. One day. And my friend smiled and said, you know, the other church I was at, this would have been totally unacceptable. <laughs> Give the people a day off. No way. Uh, programs. Buildings, and we love our buildings this morning. I came through here early this morning and looked at this sanctuary, and I just thanked God for it, uh, just because it's beautiful. I just love this room we're in here. Love that we can 
co cooperated and gave money and gave time and uh, to, to, to create this uh, th this room. I, and I, you know, I feel some ownership to this room, which I, I hope some of you others do. When I, when I stare at the floor, you know, staring at the floor is usually something you're doing when you're bored, but for me, I feel pride that almost all the staples are gone. Some of you spent hours and hours up here with me pulling staples. And we did miss a few, even though we tried very, very, very hard. You know, but, it, but is the church more than its buildings? Yes, it is. And events, uh, again, this is a church. Usually you will only have one or two events of a year. Uh, there's a church in uh, West Alabama near where I used to live called Lower Peach Street United Methodist Church, and it is almost gone. There's only about four people every fourth Sunday of the month gather at the place. And by the way, I've never found out where Upper Peach Tree is in Marengo County, but there is a Lower Peach Tree in uh, Marengo County, Alabama. But they have a homecoming once a year. 200 people! <laughs> The sin, I'm, I'm not making this up, the sin on this church of five people. Events, that's, uh, that's just driven by events. And then Seekers, that's uh, some of the more newer congregations in America. They, they say that everything they're doing is for the Seekers, which is a really good attitude to have, except when you compromise God's word, that can become a real problem. So what should drive us or any church? God's will. What does God want us to do? Pretty simple, huh? And, and then I, I share this kind of a long list. I didn't mean to take up that much time in the message talking about that. But it makes the point that we can let a lot of other things other than God's will drive this church or any church. Well, where do we know God's will from? We know it from the Bible. God's word teaches us. And a clear purpose is important for our church or any church or any organization whether it be a dentist office, whether it be a football team, whether it be a major multinational corporation, we need to have a clear purpose. What does a clear purpose do? First of all, it builds morale. When people know why they're together, they, they, they feel more motivated, they feel more engaged. Where there is no vision, the people perish, meaning the people separate when they don't have a cause they're working toward. It reduces frustration. Thank you. It reduces frustration. Because when people don't know what they're here for, they get frustrated because they don't work together well. Phillips translation, who's a Bible scholar, did his own translation of the New Testament, says James 1a this way. The man who trusts God but with inward reservation is like the wave of a sea. You say you're going to trust God, but on the inside, you never quite make up your mind. You get pulled this way, and you get pulled that way, and you get frustrated. Having a focus creates concentration. Philippians 3.13 says, No, dear brothers, not that I'm all that I should be, but this one thing I do. I'm bringing all my energies when we know our purpose. As a group, as individuals, we can use what we have in our lives to move forward. And it attracts cooperation. When people see a group of people working together, they want to join that group. Ezra, the book of Ezra is about rebuilding the temple. And so the people knew their purpose, rebuild the temple. And so they said to Ezra, their leader, take courage and tell us how to proceed. You ever had anyone do that for you? I hope so. It's really cool when it does. I know sometimes people don't listen to me and you feel frustrated. But, you know, when people say, just tell us what to do and we'll do it. Why do people do that? It's when they know their purpose. And then finally, it allows for evaluation. Did you do what you were supposed to? How can you know what you're supposed to do if you don't have a purpose? It's just that simple. And 2 Corinthians 13, 5 tells us, test yourself. Are you truly living in the faith? The Bible has a lot of different pictures of the church. We're called the body of Christ. We're called the bride of Christ. We're called the flock of God. We're called a community of Christ. We're called an army 
Now, an army to me seems really different than a bride, right? And I don't have time to cover all that here, and that's a whole sermon series I'm planning on dreaming of preaching one day. But you see, there is this diverse group of pictures that God gives to the church. So let's think about what is God calling us to do in Matthew 16. God is calling our church and every church. I, I came up with, let me make sure I get this right, five purposes here that are for us. And I think they're true of any church. This, this is totally universal, whether you're in uh, Terame, Tanzania, where my son Davis is, or we're here in Chickasaw, Alabama, or in New York City, New York. These are always relevant to us. First of all, God calls us to love the Lord with all our heart, and we call that worship. Jesus was tempted by Satan in Matthew chapter 4. And this is, till I got my mind, this took me years and years to get my mind around this, what was going on here in this story. Satan says to Jesus, look, I'll give you the whole world if you'll just bow down to me right here, right now, and it'll be a trade-off. Is, there, did you, is it just me, or do you sit and think, okay, well, Jesus, that's a pretty good trade. Can't, 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 can't you just say something nice to him and get it over with? Do, do you see how our world thinks about ourselves? God calls us as people to give ourselves to him. God calls us as people to give ourselves to each other wholeheartedly in the hope the other person is going to give themselves back to you. That's called commitment. And we express ourselves through our commitments. More than one occasion I've had people tell me, well, I just don't ever make any commitments. And I think you're a lonely, lonely person. If that is the way you're going to live. Jesus said we are called here to worship only God. And that is to love God with a heart. This is a worship service, and the integrity and the power of the worship depends on us in every service. And I know some of them are better than others, and some of that personality plays into some of it's what's going on in your world around you before you got to church. But God wants you to give your heart to him and worship. That word worship. You know, Here's a really strange thing to tell you. Used to, in wedding vows in the Methodist church, when the bride and the groom took the ring, they said, I take this ring and I worship you. Really? It used to say that. And now it says, with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you is what it says. Now, because it sounded kind of like idolatry, right? I worship you. You shouldn't worship your spouse. But it's this same, what they're trying to do is get at this idea, I give myself to you. That's what worship is for, that we were to give ourselves to you. Friends, words are really, really cheap in our world today. We've all had people say things to us that made me or you feel good and it dawned on you they didn't really mean it. God is trying to get us past this trivial use of words and be authentic in how we relate to him. God calls us to um, love him with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and there, and do I forget? I've got, oh, I've got two slides of the same verse. I'm sorry, I got lost in my own sermon. Apologize, everybody apologize online. Worship is something you're not supposed to do begrudgingly, or with, with coercion. Look at the attitude in Psalm 43, 3. Exalt the Lord with me, and let's exalt his name forever. Do you see the word ought to in there? Should. Do you feel any guilt in this sentence? Exalt the Lord with me, let's exalt his name forever. No. It's something we do freely. We do joyfully. We give ourselves to the task. And then we're also to love the Lord God and love, the, love our neighbors as ourselves. We call that ministry. Here in Ephesians 4.11, God tells us 
that he gave us spiritual gifts for us to serve one another. The church comes together to do the ministry of God for each other. This week, studying for the sermon, I read this statistic again. It always blows my mind. It is really different how churches are so different than pastors. I hate to say that, but is it going to say that? Okay. That's not being critical of you or critical of me. It's just, you know, the sun is shining. It is. And then one of the statistics said that 90% of the pastors in America said the church exists to bring people to Christ. And 10% of the pastors said that the church exists for the people to take care of each other. And then when they surveyed people in the pews, guess what? It was exactly the opposite. That 90% of the people said, I go to church because we take care of each other. I'm winning people for Christ. And I, you know, and I, 10%. That's shocking. But taking care of each other is really a good thing for the church to do. And God gives us gifts so we can serve each other as well as reach people for Christ. And so we are given to the work of ministry as a church. And then we are to go make disciples. Jesus says in Acts 1.8, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Well, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. Uh, where, uh, much as I love all of you over 18, I want to speak to the under 18-year-olds over here to my left. How do you know when your mom is really, really serious about something? Or your father, how do you know? Say it again. I heard it. They yell? Okay. They talk stubbornly? Okay. What else? No, 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 that's it. Uh, so they raise their voice, they get stubborn, but do they ever repeat themselves? Or was it just my mother? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's some repair repetition going on. Okay, that, that's one of the ways I knew my mother was serious because, okay, that's number five. She said that in the last 10 minutes. I better ought to, maybe ought to do this, you know. Now, I don't want to make Jesus sound like an irate parent because it is a common principle of communication. What is important to us, we repeat. Jesus gives the commission to reach people for Christ five times. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, it's in Luke, it's in John, and it's in the book of Acts. And it's different every time. It's not just a verbatim quote. It gives you the feeling Jesus said this more than once. So it was a big deal to him. So he says to us, he wants us to do outreach. Now, there's great discipleship making going on in our church right now. And I have a strong feeling in my spirit it's going to get stronger in the weeks to come and the months to come and I'm excited about that now some of you don't know about that and it's dawned on me thinking and working in churches through the years that a lot of times people don't know the good things going on in a church I remember I was part of a church and man we had four or five guys that were just taking off spiritually for the first time in their life. It was glorious to be a part of. And I remember talking to another group of people in the church about this kind of thing. And I said, do you know this is going on in our church? And everyone, everyone in the group said, no, I didn't know that was going on at all. Broke my heart a little bit, you know. Uh, uh, you know, but it is going on in this church. So I just want to tell you, we're actively doing outreach, and these people are responding, and God is doing things in people's lives. Baptizing them. A lot of times we think of this as, as outreach, but really it's family. It's bringing people into the life of the church. It is we are a family. You're not just baptized into Christ. You're baptized into Christ in a local church. We only have a baptistry here. Such huge, big marble uh, device there because we want to. This is what brings us here into the family and then teaching them we don't just baptize people we expect people to grow in grace and i see a lot of growing in grace going on in our church and i'm excited about that i hope you can be a part of what we're doing on wednesday nights or some other opportunity so you may grow jesus said there in the great commission in matthew's gospel in teaching them to obey everything i've commanded you don't just leave them at baptism 
Take them into spiritual growth, teaching them everything I've already said. There's a lot of things that unite us together at church, and one of those is communion. And we're going to be taking the Lord's Supper here in just a minute. And I know there's concerns about the coronavirus, and if you don't feel comfortable coming forward and taking communion, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. We I honor you, and I appreciate you just being here. If you are going to take communion, we're going to do this a little different. I'm going to ask that you get up in your pews, you take the two side aisles, and go to the back and cut down the center aisle. I want to thank Katie Morgan for getting these. And uh, wash your hands before you take communion. Yep, everybody. And I'm, I'm going to do it. Tony's going to do it. Break off a piece of bread, put it in the cup, and bring it to yourself. That way we know your hands are clean before you get near the cup and the bread. And again, if this feels unsafe, May the Lord bless you and keep you, and I'm, I'm just again glad you're here. But if you're going to take, you, I require that you do this, please. I require you with a please. <laughs> As we come to the Lord's table, let's confess our sins. Lord, we, we let you down different ways, different times. Sometimes only we know about it. It's very individual. They're in our mind. We, we carry grudges. We carry prejudices. We think bad things about ourselves and others that violates what you say about our, us and others. And Lord, we give ourselves to you that you would forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Would you pray in silence? Amen. Tony, would you come and help me serve? And again, we have a fund here in our church that helps people with financial crisis. We've been able to help people through some really tough situations in recent days. And if you would give a gift, it would be greatly appreciated. You can just put it in one of the offering plates here on the front pew and write communion rail in an envelope or leave it on the communion rail. Let's pray for the elements, Tony. Come on up. We're doing things different, so we're a little bit scattered. Dear Lord, we just uh, consecrate these gifts to you. We thank you for the gifts to us, and we just ask that you will work in this experience here by the work of your Holy Spirit, that we may experience you in the bread and in the wine. We may meet and experience the body and blood of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When Jesus was about to give himself up for us and the whole world, he met with his disciples. He took bread and he broke it and says, take and eat. This is my body broken and given for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks for it and then gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins, the blood of a new covenant, uniting people to God in a new and a powerful way. Let us now come and meet with the Lord today. Why don't you, I always am on that side, so why don't we switch sides today? Again, come down the center aisle, go up the middle aisle, the side aisles and come down the center aisle, cleanse your hands and then come and take and then return to your seats that you may pray.
statement and a question. The statement is this. The scriptures say that God has given every one of us at least one spiritual gift and probably a mixture of some spiritual gifts. That means God wants to use you in ministry, in the church, and in the community. Where are you saying yes to Jesus to serve as part of his church? And if that question causes fear and trepidation in you, please come and see me. I would love to pray for you. I believe God has multiple contributions he wants every one of us making in his church, for his kingdom, and his world. Let's close with a brief word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the table that we're gathered at, around here. We thank you for the grace that invites us to the table, the reflection of who you are. Lord, now pour out your spirit upon us as we depart. Help us as we unite and go separate ways, serving you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and care for you as we go our separate ways. Amen.